Amen. And amen. Since we are here for a purpose, we are not here by accident, but we are here for a purpose. Some people believe that the Lord brought us here by accident. No, he didn't. The Lord always have a will for our life. And the Lord promised good things to his people. And he said, more to it again, if we only believe. The real emphasis today in man's life is to believe. It's to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's to believe that he's able to do exceedingly and above. It's to believe he's able to deliver. It's to believe that he'll come again and to receive people unto himself. That where he is, everyone that believes will be there also. And when we believe those things, we can take it to the bank. Because God is real. You know what I love about our God? He does not change. He's not like man. We change every minute. Today we high, tomorrow we low. Tomorrow we low, next day we high. Today we want to stay in the valley, next day we want to run to the mountain top. And when you look for us again, we're in the cave hiding. That's the difference with man and God. But the Lord is different. What he said today, he mean it. That's what he'll do tomorrow. He's the same God. Now this morning we will be looking into chapter 9 of the book of John. I look at a few things uh, yesterday and even last night. What the Lord have done. What the Lord did. And what the Lord will be doing. This morning, we will look in the chapter 9. But before we do that, we had three reference verses from chapter 8, in the closing of chapter 8. In other words, Chapter 8 had 59 verses. And at the, at the last verse, we saw some comments from some of the apostles. Actually from John and from Luke. So we look at the three verses, and then we'll see how much our Savior is compassionate, how much he's loving, how much he's humble, and no way he's like man. He's different. While people always try to destroy him, try to kill him, he never blew on them that he would fall down, which he had the power to do. He never tapped his finger that he would stop or shut them off or walk away. He didn't do that. Instead, Jesus walked away from them. I'm talking about our Savior, I'm talking about our Creator, I'm talking about our God. That's what he did. So we will first look at John chapter 10 and verses 31 before we get into chapter 9 where we'll, we'll start this morning. We look at John chapter 10 and verses 31. 
I always love that we read two verses. Most times I take three verses, the one before and the one after and the one in the middle. So by doing so, we pick up something. We pick up the pretext, the text, and the context. It is very important to pick up those three. Because when you do that, you could know why the purpose and the reality when you do those things. So it's on the board. Anybody have the mic? Please read me. And we, we will anticipate on some reading this morning that we could share our reading, but move on and do it the way the Lord loves us, so we would want us to do it. We need some life in that. On, but it, okay, okay, get on now. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of the, those works do you stone me? Okay. Okay. That's a uh, ten. 31, they pick up stone to stone him. But little do they know, he was about to leave. You know, he would not be around with them for very long. He was just trying to wind it up. See that they get something before he go. Because he was already on another mission. But they were so hurry to do their own things that they take up stone to stone him because he said, I and my father, we are one. But then, as we look at another verse, which is say, the same John 11, we could take 7, 8, and 9. Seven, eight, and nine of chapter eleven. And as I said, no, of, of uh, seven, eight, and nine of, of uh, sorry, am I right here? Yeah. Chapter eleven. Eleven, eight, John eleven, eight, and nine, verse eight, and nine. It's on the board. Okay, uh, verse eight and nine. Chapter eleven. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. So oh. you said 11, you take 12, 8, you? 9, and 10? You want to take 10 to take 10? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I did 10. But if one stumbles in the night, he st but if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Okay. Now, I, you know, I love those three verses you read. Now, these verses were my children's favorite verses when they were growing up. That Shem, Clyde, and Indy. Around five o'clock in the morning, they would get up and have their own service while we are in bed, still in bed. And we never stop them. We never stop them. They would have their own service in the early morning. And that's the main verse, what we have just read there. Hmm. He that walk in the night will surely slumber. Why? Because there is no light in him. And today I can see they still love those verses. Indira become a pastor. Shem still love the Lord. And might be one soon too, you never know. Because to every church that we visit while I was in St. Thomas, 
The pastor would tell them, there's a calling on you. Stop running. Several pastors tell him, there's a calling on you. And my daughter told him that long time too. Yeah. I saw that long time too. My wife saw that. And then there is a calling on you. I think pastors saw that too. <laughs> there is a calling on him. Uh, so what I'm saying, the way you grew up in the word, there somebody could see something that will happen very soon. Clyde loved the word too. Something I got from Clyde a uh, couple of days ago. I said, but Clyde, why you don't come home very often? Why you don't want to come home or come to church? He said, Dad, I, sometimes I directly come around because sometimes when I come around, I still get sick again. And he said, sometimes he gets sick when he come home. And sometimes I, sometimes I attempt to bring him back from in his, in his, the place where he lives. He said, whenever he get come home, sometimes he gets sick. So he probably think that he's somewhat embarrassment to us that as he get home, he gets sick. And he, sometimes they trouble him. And that's what his purpose, why he do like them, 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 them to come. But then I was, before I get into the lesson, I must say that quick. And you know, I was speaking to the Lord even yesterday. I say, Lord, I somewhat understand that young man. Knowing that you are our God, Knowing that he grew up in the Christian life. Knowing that the words that you spoke and you say that you are and what you will do. But he seems still not seeing that full result. Though there is some result because God still keep him alive. He could be dead a long time. But God keep him alive. But he has not seen the miracles that the Lord has performed on him. The Lord has performed a lot. I saw them. He may have seen a little but not much. But we, when we out there and well, we see somebody else differently and think they should do, their, do this or do that. But you'd put yourself in the place for one day and see if you'd like to be there. I was checking my son in that condition probably on 33 years. 33 years. And he don't like it. You know... His condition, he know how it is, he know what he wanted to be, and he don't like it. Just like anyone else that in some kind of condition would feel the same way. So what I'm saying, while we are well and strong, let's praise God. Let's thank God. Because if we had a condition probably would be too weak in order to even say thank you Lord you know what I'm trying to say some people when or we usually say it that way put another shoes put that shoes on the other foot and see how it is with you now I'm just saying that to say when you are in condition, certain conditions that you are happy about it, but because you're strong, you still trust God and stay firm. And that's what the Lord wants us to do, is to wait on Him. Yes. Wait on Him. Yes. It takes time. Yes, my sister. I got up well, basically around the same that I tried to get up, but uh, this morning when I got up and uh, I did some of the things that I needed to do and I was sitting down in the dining room getting ready to uh, eat breakfast. I had already prepared my husband's breakfast and told him that it was, you know, ready for him. But I sat there quietly and I began to worship the Lord. And I remember it, it was, I don't generally do this. And I sat there and the Lord just brought my mom and my dad back to me. Things yes. about my father and things about my mother. And especially my mother because my mother was very, very hard on me. 
But I sat there and began to thank God for my mother and the way that she had raised me, the things that she declared that I would never be a part of. And I mean, she worked at it, that, it, that I did not get involved in certain, you know, activities and with certain people. And I sat there this morning, and all that, that I just welled up with tears because I remember I was not the, out, the outward fighter of, you know, against my parents or anything like that. Yeah. But on the inside, I was, you know. And I sat there and I said, Lord, I just thank you that you know when I was fighting against, you know, what they were, yes, their, yeah. how they were raising me on the inside. But they knew something about your hand on me that I didn't know. And they were determined that there were certain things that I would never get involved with. And all I could do this morning was just sit there and just weep a little bit and thank God for my parents. My dad was a man who never, the little bit of learning and reading, my father learned it by learning how to read yes. the Bible. And I am so grateful to them for keeping their hands on me the way that they did. <laughs> Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. And uh, we get there because uh, the Lord preparing us for the lesson. Where are we going this morning? Yes, yes. I, I wanted to know if I could read, even though you took us forward, can I read where we left off last week? Because it's the same thing. It's I think that's where we are. No. We, that's, we, yeah, the reference, we just go back. Because hmm. we are supposed to be in chapter, chapter nine. 9 this morning. But then yes. I just pick back three reference verses that oh, we left okay. out from last week. Oh, okay. I misunderstood that's what, you. That's what I'm doing. Okay, got and it. And we have a last one, which okay. is from Luke. Luke chapter 4 and verse 30. Okay. Okay, I misunderstood you. Luke chapter 4, verse 30? 30, yeah, Luke chapter 4. Verse, you, want, uh, you want it read? Yeah, read it, please. Okay. If there's any. Hmm. Oh, I think we should take uh, 29, 30, and 31. Do that for me, sis, please. Okay. Take Luke chapter 4, 29, 30, and 31. Okay. And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. Okay. That's, that's 31. Okay. Okay, probably all of that's not what I... Okay, we'll take that. Now, this morning, uh, we'll be looking into chapter 9. Okay. And actually... The message is debate, for me, the, the, the debate or the four miraculous sign. The, the, the four, that's the fourth one, miracle, the fourth miracle sign that uh, Jesus did. And there will be a great debate between the Jews, the Pharisees, and the Jesus. Because that's what it seems they had really come to do. Just to debate, to argue the work that God gave the son to do. And he was doing it. And doing it well. But it was not in their favor it seems. 
Because they wanted Jesus to do it their way. But he had come to do it the Father's way. And that's what that can mess up a person badly. When you are on a mission for God, God sends you to do something to help the same people that will try to kill you. But because they are blind, they cannot see that. And that's what happened to the Jews and the Pharisees. They did not want to hear Jesus of what he's saying. Because it was not in their favor. In other words, they were on the dark side, if you want to say it that way. Because most of them were blind. So then we're going to take verse 1 of chapter 9. Yeah, chapter 9, verse 1. No, we, we, we leave Luke. Luke was, ju Luke was just a reference. John. John. Sorry. Yeah, Luke was just a reference verse. But we are in John chapter 9 at this time. We just finish it. And we into 9. Well, what I give us there is what we pick up as we are going on. Of what... Because I... What we, what are supposed to... What we... What I had there, okay, probably I don't get there yet. Okay. We have it on the board? Yes. Yes, really. And Jesus passed by. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Okay, let's, let's stop there. Actually, I wanted to move step by step, but then we don't let it in. We didn't have to do that. We didn't really... Because something happened earlier on, I, which I, uh, I saw. Because actually, Jesus did not even answer them right away when they asked him that question. If I would uh, paraphrase what we have just read there. And as Jesus passed by, he saw, he saw a man which was born... A man which was blind from his birth. Verse 1, Jennifer. That's verse 1. That's verse 1. That which, was, which was blind from his birth. And verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? But before we get into verse 3, I saw something while, we, while I was studying it. And it is in Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Let's look at Luke one more time. Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. And that's what I was uh, somewhat a little confused there while we read. Luke. Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 13, and read it from verse 1 to 3. That's when they asked Jesus that question, who did sin? But even before, if we understand it clearly, 
of what was said, the question they asked Jesus, who did sin? If it was that man or his parents, but they understood what really happened because they said, who did sin? This man or his parents seen that he was born blind. When one is born blind, that just means he was a baby. He cannot sin. Right? In the first sense, when you're a baby, you cannot sin. So why ask him that question? Who did sin if it's he or his father that he was born blind? Some people say, that's not bro. Some people say that uh, no question is dumb. Every question have an answer. But what I'm trying to say, a baby cannot sin to ask if the child had that sin or his parents. Yes. Well, I. Oh. Okay, so then, even before we get to verse 3, let's read what happened in Luke. Chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all perish likewise. Okay. Okay. That's verse 3, right? Yes. That's right. In other words, they were somewhat somewhat rejoicing or checking like they were better than those that get hurt right. or those blood that Pilate take and mingle with their sacrifice. Oh, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. sis. No, go okay. ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you. Okay, what do you have to say? Say it. Let me well, it, yeah, it's like they think that there's degrees of sin. So... Um, well, so that happened to them because, you know, their sin was, uh, was, was a higher degree of sin. So that's why that happened to them. And just like when they asked who sinned, was it the man or, or his parents, they recognized that they were associating a, 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 a deformity or a, an attack in your body as happening to you because you sinned. And to me, Jesus squashed their answer, their question right here because he's saying, all of you, <laughs> we're, we're all in the same, you, I mean, not we, but you guys are all in the same boat. Every last one of you <laughs> are sinners. And, and that's why he was saying, you know, like, in, it, it could happen to you too. It's not like they were any better they were any bigger sinners than you. He, he didn't see degrees. Here you go, sister. Okay, yes, sis. You know, even though G, all these things were being discussed about Jesus, taught about Jesus, and Jesus himself saying thing, the one thing that I noticed that these people really didn't realize, seemed to me, that they were always talking to him in the natural way. Yeah. They were always talking to him in the natural way, and he was trying to get over a spiritual truth to them. That's where he was. They, they, I don't, they, they just seemed like they just didn't get it. With everything that he had done, all of the people that were blind, and he, you know, they were made to see the ones that could walk and all these different things. They just didn't seem to get it. They still talked to him as though he was a fleshly, you know, you know, he, he was concerned with the fleshly side of everything.
I think that in those times, people realized that violating the law would cause the curse of the law to come upon you. And so when they're looking at this, they're looking at people who died. And Christ is saying, nobody is without sin. He's the only one there who knows that, though. He's the only one who knows all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he's saying, I'm sorry, I was trying to fix the clock. He's saying, basically, um, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he is showing this point. But in both of these passages, they knew that sin caused reaction through the curse of the law. So when they're looking at the baby there, they're saying, well, this baby couldn't have sinned, Lord. So did his parents sin? And is that what caused the baby to be born blind? Or did somehow the baby sin? Was there inherent sin that came yeah, from Adam and went through? And so they're looking at these situations and they're going, we can't tell which one caused this baby to be blind. And Jesus is saying, neither one, because he knows that the sin came from Adam and Eve that caused that blindness. So, Okay. Now, uh, let me say something. Now, uh, before we get into verse 3 of chapter 9. Now, many times people look at, as we said, the people was always looking on one way, the natural. Yes, yes. Jesus had come to teach them some spiritual stuff, bring them into the spiritual, yes. but they were in the natural. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I don't know why you're talking about my son so much this morning, which I do like to. But sometimes I have to. Because uh, back home, knowing I was a minister, they were a pastor, actually. One day, a cousin of mine, may her soul rest in peace, she's dead now, much, much younger than me. But, uh, and she's a witch of the witnesses. She was the witnesses. She, she turned and told me, but John, she didn't say Pastor John, but say John, actually. Or, whatever. But she said, John, you think it's not something wrong that you are doing? That's why your son gets sick? That's the question she asked me. If it's not something wrong that I was doing, that's why my son gets sick. Now, some people claim to be so good and so perfect that they think that the other side doing wrong. Now, uh, she got a brain tumor and she died because she had two sons that gave her so much problem. So much problem and nobody knew about it until she couldn't make it. That killer, the brain tumor killer, she died. But I'm saying, but I'm saying that to say, I shouldn't even have to say it, but I'm saying that to say, never point a finger at a person. I think we use the black home. I won't use black home. Don't throw stone in people's houses when they have glass window. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, we probably use that word here too. No, here they say. <laughs> Can I say? Yes, yeah, go ahead. He, here they say, don't throw stones. Living in a glass house, don't throw stones. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> sometimes we forget. Yes. We forget who we are. We are human. Yes. We are human. But then it's almost time for us to stop. But let me just run and see that part in verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto, Jesus, Jesus answered the question of who really sinned. He said, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents. Number three. That's three. Yeah, 9 3. I went from 9 3. When he answered the question, he said, Neither did sin. None of them sin. Not this child, nor 
his parents sin. But that the work of God should be made manifest in him or display in him. In other words, God chose that child to bring God's word about. Brother Craig was going to say something. God's purpose is to preach the word of God. Our purpose is to preach God's word. And God will use who he wants to preach his word. He will do it the way he wants. And he has to get a donkey to do it. He will push one day too. Most times God get the most idiot. Yeah, I must say that way. Sometimes the Lord get the most idiot. In other words, to bring his word about. Yes. That's why he went got Paul, right? That's why he used the most learned man on earth at the time. Yeah, but that, I said sometime why Paul was a fisherman with all the intelligence he had. God sometimes used the most low grade people yes, he does. to get his work yes, about. Yes, yes. God though looking for intelligent people that will think they are God like him. He look for people that cannot do it themselves. Yes. Yes. People that depend on him. Yes. Yes. That's the people the Lord wants. Yes, yes Pastor. Mm -hmm. oh, That's right. Yeah, if you fail to do it, he yeah. said, go ahead, Pastor. He said that the rocks would cry out for him. Yes, he said that. <laughs> Jesus, he created man, he know man. He knows my ability. Yes, my sister. We're going to close an order. Yes, he also said, uh, 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 okay, you know, shoot, that with the, the rejects, that, the, that it, it says not many of you are wise and wealthy. It's the outcasts that, come, that Jesus said the common folk were coming to him. They were hearing the word. They were receiving the word. Okay. Or what man casts aside, God can take it and use it. That's what they are. That's what. Yeah. With Pastor Publishing, I just, two more verses, Pastor. Can I just close it up? Two more verses. Let me do that. Don't close it, Brother Craig. I just have verse four, four, four and five to close up where I actually study. Now, Jesus wanted to send a message along, which he's trying to do this morning. Mm -hmm. What he's trying to tell us this morning. Be careful how we handle situations because he's in control. That's true. He's in charge. He knows what he's doing. As I said, while the people tried to stone him, there was a blind man that waiting on him. To give him sight. Or God placed that blind guy there. From birth. In order to bring his word about. That's why Jesus said in verse. Uh, 9 and verse 4. Actually. That was one of my great messages back in the Caribbean. I must really say that. I must read that. That's, that's my first. You know, my, I think my mother. My first time. When I felt the real heat of the presence of the Holy Spirit Amen. in a Baptist church. And that's where I knew that it was really real and real strong. I didn't speak in tongue that time. I was not in that time. But that day I feel my both leg was catching fire when I was preaching that message. And that's right where I was in a, John 9, 4. And all, uh, because it was a, a somewhat of a conference, and all the, the leader of the uh, mission, he was sitting down close to me, and all he, all he was able to say, go ahead, Johnny, go ahead, Johnny, go ahead, Johnny. And, but I felt that my both leg 
was like it was on fire, really burning like it, like it was already catching fire. One has preaching a message. And that's what Jesus said in verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can work. Now we have to understand that one what he's actually saying. Now it is their time. Work now. Amen, amen. For the time coming when you will not be able to do it. Oh. Now Jesus is more or less referring to his death. Because everything that Jesus do here on earth was timing. Yeah. It had to do with time. Yeah. So he had to hurry fast and do what he had to do. Yeah. Because God gave him a, a certain time to complete that work Amen. he was sent to do. In other words, when I look on the other part of the, uh, the scripture, he said, he said, we must work. When I look on the other side of that Ryrie Bible, not Riri, but Ryrie the Bible said, we must work the work of him that sent me. As long as I, as long it is day, night is coming when no man can work. First, we see plural when you say there, we. Jesus and the Father was working together. You could not see him. Because the Father is spirit. Jesus is spirit too. But remember that God gave him a body to work on earth. If you understand that part. Mm -hmm. Remember he said in, in, in Hebrews, you have given me a body. So Jesus was both body and spirit. He, in fact, he was flesh. He was flesh. If you can say but. His father was spirit. That's why he said, we must work. We must work. But he said, I must complete that work. That, and then he, a little lower down, he said, I must work the work of him. That's, we, he said, we must work the works of him that sent me. He didn't say us. But he said, me. For the night cometh when no man can work. And he said in verse 5, which is the last verse. As long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. That should go to us too. While we are in this world or in this area, yes, yes. we should be the light for this area. Yes. Right here on earth. You know, in other words, we should be God's reflection. We should shine for the Lord. And that's the, the end of the lesson for today. Let us shine for the Lord. And regardless what people tell us, regardless what people say, regardless they like you or don't like you, yes. God sent us for a purpose. Yes. And we must do the will of God. Amen. Thank you. Let's pick up the offering and then close. Yeah, we went over by almost... Yeah, we went over by seven, eight minutes.